This is Bob Rourke with Business Leaders Podcast, and this morning we have quite the treat. We have uh, Jamie Zalman. She is the founder, and she's also the president of Titan, CEO, and we have Martha Carlin. She is the CEO and co-founder of the Bio Collective, and so we're having a co-hosted episode. Martha, Jamie, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, and, and Martha, thank you, and congrats on being selected to the Titan 100. A big honor. I'm very excited about it. Well, super. Well, I tell you, we'll, we'll jump right in. Martha, if you would, tell us about your business and who you serve. So my business is pretty unique. Um, it's in the field of the microbiome, and for people who may not know what the microbiome is, um, it's the trillion of trillions of bacteria, fungi, and viruses that live in and on our body. And over the last really five to seven years, it's become increasingly apparent uh, that the bacteria that live in and on our body are um, a critical component to our health. And I recognized this um, after reading a book called Missing Microbes back in 2014 founded the Bio Collective in 2015 to try to accelerate the path to discovery and helping people get healthier. Um, and so by doing that, we actually went into an industry that um, most people had never heard of. It was rapidly um, growing and expanding. When I started the company, there were about um, 20 microbiome companies worldwide and now there are thousands and thousands of them. But it's still pretty early days. Um, and our company has evolved um, in the ways that we are serving really two different customer bases. So we serve the scientific research community through um, tools that we actually developed um, for our own work to build out a biobank of fecal samples and genomic data so that we could start to use um, artificial intelligence and machine learning to identify patterns in healthy people and diseased people. And through the, the tools that we developed, we actually received an NIH grant for $1.2 million to develop one of those um, quality control and research tools. So the division of the bio collective that has all these research tools is really serving the scientific community, the nutrition community, um, pharmaceutical companies, um, and you know, big food and big ag to some extent. Um, and then uh, along the way, uh, we developed our expertise and brought in a chief scientific officer with over 30 years of microbial ecology and developed a line and a brand of consumer products um, that actually replace lost function in the microbiome that we were able to identify um, through our data analytics. And so we have a consumer products platform called BiotiQuest um, that has uh, six products. Three are currently on the market. Uh, one is for changing sugar metabolism in the body. It's called Sugar Shift. Uh, another is for uh, the immune system, specifically protecting us and helping us uh, ward off uh, viral infection, and that's called the ideal immunity. And then uh, another called heart-centered, which is focused on cardiovascular health and the production of nitric oxide um, in the body, which helps vasodilation. And then three products that will be coming out next year. Um, and then we, we actually uh, invested by using our scientific research team in partnership uh, with a, um, our chief scientific officer in his ancient microbial collection, we have a, a, a company we own a 20% interest in called Paleobiotica because we, we found in looking at the data that we had um, that you really can't help people be healthy if you don't help the planet and the soil and our food be healthy. And so Paleobiotica is focused on doing the same thing we're doing with BiotiQuest in soils, plants, so doing uh, essentially probiotic systems that can bioremediate things like Roundup and glyphosate from the soil, um, help 
plants, uh, seeds germinate faster and plants grow larger and healthier and, and take up more nutrients from the soil. Fascinating departure. And, and if, if some of the folks are going like, I think I've heard about this before. You are one of the early guests on the podcast way back when. So thank you so much for being an early guest as well. Thanks, Bob. It was Absolutely. fun. But we have, we have definitely um, changed and grown a lot over the, the last five years in, in learning to be in a rapidly evolving industry. So, Martha, I have to ask you, you know, as a 2020 Titan 100, and we're so excited to recognize you in the, the Titan 100 book for 2020, clearly listening to all the things that you've been talking about, just the way that you and your team are paving the way, uh, what do you think are the characteristics that it takes to be considered a Titan of industry like yourself? You know, I would say, you know, really two of the key characteristics are tenacity and creativity. You know, when you're going into a, a, a new, and, and adaptability, I would say, um, when you're going into a new industry, um, it's very important that you, you, while you keep focused on your goals, that you have a wide vision of what's going on in the industry and you're not so singularly focused that you can't make a pivot or a turn um, when you see something critical. Um, I think tenacity uh, for any mm -hmm. entrepreneur, uh, when you start a business, um, you know, most businesses fail within the first two to three years. So it's very mm -hmm. important um, to keep uh, a sort of, tenacious attitude that you can you can do this um, and then creativity because you know we're trying to solve problems for people um, and that that requires a level of creativity and you have to foster that in your people as well um, you know too much of a of a co corporate culture can actually dampen down creativity so it's that you know balancing a process with creativity well, in the last five years that you've run it, been running BioCollective, you've certainly proven your ability to be adaptive, creative, and of, of certainty, um, the tenacity that exists. So congratulations. Thank you. you. You know, Martha, as I think about it, and I'm, I'm listening, and, you know, and of course, the benefit of, of our previous discussions and your journey to the starting of the BioCollective Let's say that there's a, another entrepreneur or CEO out there that's aspiring to be a titan of industry like you. What advice might you share to them that they could incorporate in their in their day to day life that might help him progress to where they qualify to be a titan of industry? Keeping your focus uh, is very important, and keeping your focus on what matters and. Um, not getting but distracted by things that aren't contributing to driving your top line. There are so many um, things that compete for an entrepreneur's attention uh, because in a lot of ways, a new entrepreneur is actually a market. And there's a big market for new entrepreneurs that um, – drives your attention away from running your business and has you off at these meetings and networking and talking to these people. And while those things are important um, or can be important for driving relationships for your business, they can also be a huge distraction. So it's, to me, the advice I would give is keep your focus on what's going to drive you in the direction of the most predictable revenue stream you can get Perfect. You know, and I, I think about that. And, and so for the person listening, go, okay, is there a ritual, a uh, protocol, uh, a habit that you do on, on a periodic basis that allows you to maintain that focus? Uh, well, the, the main habit that I have that it, uh, would, it's a bit outside the norm, I would say, for business, but um, I actually wake up every morning and uh, spend quiet time meditating and then I do a Qigong practice which if you're not familiar with Qigong it's a ancient Chinese um, 
energy practice where um, you're really centering and grounding yourself and um, connecting with the chi of the universe. So that's uh, maybe a bit unconventional for a business person, but for me, that really sets my day off and my intention for the day to bring uh, good into the world through my business and the way I live my life. I have a Tai Chi instructor that lives in my house. Yeah. And we talk Qigong fairly frequently, so I am aware. So, well, thank you for that. I think that, it, I think that that's actually a pretty common characteristic and a trait of a lot of entrepreneurs that are successful is they find the time for themselves to connect with the universe, visualization, similar to the focus, right? Um, putting it out there to the universe. I know I'm a huge proponent of that. So I think that that's excellent that you practice the meditation. So I have to ask another question now. If you were to go back five years, right? Because BioCollective is five years, five years old at this point, um, founded in 2015, now at 2020. And you were to go back five years and offer the less experienced you advice about leading BioCollective and building it to the company that it is today. What would you advise yourself? What advice would you offer yourself and why? I think if I, if I went back in time and were to give myself some advice, um, and this is a bit funny because my background is actually in accounting. Um, and most of my career, I spent a very tight focus on, you know, where things were spent. I think I would advise myself to keep a much tighter control on those early funds and where I spent them. Money in some of those things I talked about a bit ago, um, you know, going paying to attend a conference or different things that really didn't translate into financial success uh, or, or, you know, the top line for the company. And that's probably one of the biggest things. Um, but it's interesting because I watched a Star Trek episode uh, from the 1990s um, over the weekend and Jean-Luc went back in time and was given the opportunity to um, change the things that he did. And he changed some of those things and then it showed him at the point in time in the future and it had changed his life in such a dramatic way he was no longer the captain of the ship. And so I think I think sometimes the choices that we make in the beginning and the adver adversity that we go through is part of what we need to learn to make us who we are today. And so maybe I wouldn't change anything at all. I love it. They say sometimes that everything happens for a reason. Yes. So. I think the corollary to that is it's no matter how obscure it might be, you know, you're busy paying tuition to kind of get from A to B. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I have an admitted shiny object problem, you know, Oh, that looks interesting or, Oh, that's a good book. So yeah, I have that problem. So for you, you know, Martha, as you're, as you're operating the company on the day to day basis, you know, there's highs and lows throughout the course of the weeks and so on, you know, as you go through your Qigong meditations and so on, what's the self-talk and, and the mental third-party coaching that you do for yourself to keep you focused and going? So I actually have, this is interesting, my, my, uh, my daughter gave me this bracelet um, right about a year after I started the company and, it's, and it says she believed she could, so she did. Mm. Um, and that's really something that I keep top of mind. Um, and I look, you know, not just in this company, but back over my life, anything I've set my mind to, I've been able to accomplish. And so I, you know, I carry that with me every day. And that's the self-talk that I tell myself is you can do this, you can do this. And I do the same for my team and really trying to inspire them to know that they can do anything they set their mind to. I love that. And Martha, I have to show you what's on my wall. <laughs> I, I love, love it. it. <laughs> I love it. Somebody, when I first started my business, someone sent this to me. It's actually a card and I framed it. So great minds 
yes. into life. <laughs> That's awesome. Motivation and inspiration. Yes. Yeah, like they say, think you can, think you can, either way you're right. And belief is half, uh, it will get you more than halfway there. So yeah. I'm, I'm a huge proponent of that. I feel like we're just getting so many great tidbits. I love the stories. I love the examples. Um, we talked a little bit about characteristics that you think it takes to be considered a Titan, but I'd also be curious to know what advice you might offer, you know, with respect to entrepreneurship to a new CEO that's assuming the role of CEO for the very first time. There are so many lessons that, um, and so many things that you don't know. <laughs> and, it, you know, a lot of that will depend on what kind of a background you came from. Um, one big piece of advice I would give you is find some mentors who have the skill sets in the areas that you are weak in or you don't know something about. Um, you know, marketing and sales uh, was not my strength. And so, you know, when I finally found the right mentors and, and people who could help me with that, um, you know, that, that turned things around for me. Um, some other advice I would say is um, you're in the beginning, your company is not worth as much as you think it is. Um, and so you have to decide um, what you're willing to give up to bring in capital or what you're willing to do through true grit to get to the revenue numbers that are going to make it closer to being worth what you think it's for. And you know, I say that because you'll talk to lots of people about investing in you, but all of that takes time. It's relationship development. It's um, people coming to trust that you can do what you say you're going to do. People coming to trust the numbers that you're showing them. And so, uh, you know, one piece of advice is um, don't, don't start raising money when you desperately need it. Um, start those conversations well ahead of when you need the money um, so that you have developed those strong relationships and demonstration that you can do what you say so that yeah. at the time when you need the money, you can close the cap. It's some very, very sage advice. And I believe that every CEO should tries to strive to find people to surround themselves with that are smarter than they are. Um, you had mentioned too that finding those mentors, did you have a specific mentor that were, was really crucial for you when you started bio collective? I didn't really have a, an outside mentor that was crucial for me. I was very fortunate that, uh, my one primary investor, uh, was actually the chairman of the board of a public company I used to run. And he also was an entrepreneur his whole life, um, was the head of um, YPO um, in California and YPO, like the whole United States. Um, so he had a lot of um, advice and experience from that perspective and was always able to, you know, level things out for me when, uh, you know, if I was feeling low, you know, he had great stories and um, experiences that he could share with me that translated about how to get through it. Um, so that really helped. But I actually went on later to find um, an entrepreneurial executive coach, um, I had had a lot of uh, coaching and different uh, advisors and mentors when I was in the big corporate world, um, but that's a very different world than being an entrepreneur. And I think um, it's very important if you're going to hire a coach or find a coach um, or, or mentor to have somebody who works with entrepreneurs and small business owners rather than, you know, big corporate strategy because the the problems and challenges are really quite different for sure oh yeah 
Well, you know, we, we've heard a bit about your journey and your company, so we know what you do for work. What do you do when you're not at work? What are your passions outside of, of the workspace? So probably my biggest passion outside the workspace is trying to cure Parkinson's, which is the reason behind my company in the first place. My husband has Parkinson's and he was diagnosed when 18 years ago when he was 44. So, you know, my largest passion is uh, ha over the last 18 years has been teaching myself science across the spectrum and developing relationships with global leaders in many different fields of science. So I network and collaborate with scientists all across the world, um, really trying to find a cure for Parkinson's disease. Well, that, that sounds like that could pretty well consume any other bandwidth of time. Well, sure. I, I do a lot of, uh, you know, living here in Colorado in such a beautiful place. I also do a lot of hiking um, and outdoor activities. And in 2011, my husband and I climbed Mount Kilimanjaro um, awesome. with a, a group of people with Parkinson's and MS. So we had 28 people, 10 people with multiple sclerosis, um, four with Parkinson's, and each person was paired with a healthy partner. So that is that goal actually is what really got me back into um, hiking and exercising and getting in shape so that I can reach the peaks of the mountains of Colorado or the globe. Well, that, that certainly supports the entrepreneurial foundation because if you're not healthy and in shape, it's pretty hard to be tenacious and put one foot in front of the other if you're worn out all the time, for sure. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> so Martha, as we kind of wrap up things, I'd be curious to know um, from you, as you think about the Bio Collective, what's the most important thing that people should know about the work that you're doing and how they can support you? Wow, that's a, that's a big question for a small company because our, our goal from the very beginning has really been saving the world. <laughs> um, and through that, um, you know, it's about helping individuals take control of their health. It's about um, helping the scientific community do more robust and better science. Um, through our subsidiary, it's about um, helping the globe be healthier. But I also have a, a nonprofit for anyone who's interested in um, supporting microbiome research. We have a 501c3 called BioCollective Research, and people can donate to the to the cause of trying to save the world and help people be healthier through funding microbiome research. Great. And the website again, one more time for everybody. So uh, my primary website is uh, www.thebiocollective.com. And uh, the foundation website is www.biocollectiveresearch.org. And you're found on LinkedIn as well? And I'm found on LinkedIn. And you can buy the probiotic products on bioticquest.com. So that's B-I-O-T-I-Q-U-E-S-T.com. I'm definitely going to go check that out, um, which is awesome. Martha, you are an incredible titan of industry. And it has been so fun, you know, connecting and hearing your story and listening to your words of wisdom. Um, for those folks that are watching or listening, you can read more of Martha's story by visiting titan100.biz um, online, and you can see Martha's profile along with the other 2020 Titan 100. So uh, if you go to titan100.biz, you can toggle over to the Titan 100, scroll down, find Martha, click and read her entire story. We also have a copy of the digital edition that is available on the website too, so you can see what the book looks like. Um, but Martha, you're an inspiration to so many. Thank you for all the work that you do. Um, congratulations on your success, and it's been really great interviewing you here as part of our Titan 100 podcast series. Thank you so much for having me today. 
Thanks you for guys, being Jamie, here. thanks for co-hosting. Awesome job. Thank you so much. Martha, so good to see you again. Uh, it's been too darn long. So you guys take care and thanks so much for being on the show. Thank you.